What we're looking at today is Google Forms, or as many people refer to it as Google Quiz. An important distinction to make um, regarding this is Google Quiz is simply a type of Google Form. So if you're going to be creating your, your Google Quizzes, what you're actually going to be doing is you're going to be going through Google Forms and just changing a setting on it. So as with any of the Google, uh, Google Apps, I always recommend that you navigate to the appropriate folder in Google Drive and then create your Google file from within the correct drive. In this instance, we just this is the screen that you will see if you open up a new tab and you click on the waffle and you go to Google Forms, you end up at something that looks like this. So from here, you can just simply go straight to a blank quiz, but you can also start a blank form and then transform it into a quiz. So we're just going to go for, the, for this tutorial. We want to select a blank quiz. Right, once you've created your blank quiz, you can immediately you start with your first question. If you want to give your quiz a name, you just simply click here at the top. Let's call it sample quiz. We're going to change it there. You can also rename the file to sample quiz, whatever you want by changing the file up there. Now, for each question that you add, you'll see there's a number of different options. We've got short answer, paragraph, multiple choice, checkbox, drop down, and then a couple of other slightly more complicated options. We're just going to look at some of the basic options in this tutorial, and then in a further video, we'll look at some of the more advanced features. Now, when creating questions, if we're going to if we're going to enter a simple question like he was or were late, right? So we're going to, we've created a simple sentence like that. Now, be careful because the learner does not necessarily understand what they will have to do here. It is a straightforward one, but we need to provide more instructions sometimes. But just for this example, we're going to use this one now. So we'll create two options, was and were. He's got two options to select. To select. One of the two is correct. So what we do now is we add an answer key by clicking on the answer key and selecting the correct answer. He was late. And assign a point value to it. If you don't assign a point value, the default point value will remain zero. Right? And then we say done. Now you can choose whether or not this question is required or if it's optional. If we want to create the same type of question, but we don't want to make it multiple choice, we can have the same here. He was, were, late. And we change it to a short answer. So they will have to write a short one word, two words, short sentence as an answer. Be careful because when we do this as an answer key, the correct answer is was. However, we don't know what the learners will write necessarily because if they write was with a space, Google will see it as an incorrect answer or with a capital letter, it will be incorrect. So if you want to do it this way around, I always say give them a few options that it can pick from. So we've got the normal one, was that's capitalized and was with an extra space at the end. So if they write it exactly like that, then they will get a mark. But because this happens quite often, generally Google Quiz works very well with multiple choice. Be careful because we can also add another option where they have checkboxes. Now, the difference between checkboxes is if we're going to say he was, were late, this will give them the option of having selecting more than one instance. Now, for this type of question, we don't actually want to have that because if a learner is going to answer it, they might tick both. And if they tick both, the answer is obviously incorrect. So we want, for, for a question like this, we're probably going to use the radial options rather than the, than the check boxes. However, depending on the types of question, you can do it different in many different ways. So we're going to add an answer key. We'll make it one mark. We're going to say they have to add that. Now I want to pause here for a second and have a look at this add answer feedback. So if we click that add answer feedback, we can always give them some feedback. So for incorrect answers, while Google Quiz will display the, the, the correct answer automatically, we can say we could add a response here like, sorry, try again. Or a correct answer, we can add, what a great answer. So we can add certain things. We could even go as far as to add links. So in other words, if they get, an, if they get a question wrong, we add a link or a YouTube video for them to go and refer to. Um, if you want to, if 
if you wanted to add that. This is great for for a if we want to really add a lot of value to our forms in that when they get it wrong, there's an explanation of why they got it wrong as well. Um, you can play around. There's a number of other options in here as well. One of the useful things that I'd want to show you as well is when we want to insert images. So let's say, for example, we have a question, identify which of the images is a house, right? So there's our question that we're going to pose them. So option one, now we need to insert an image. If we click on add image, as with many of the Google um, apps, there's a number of different options. We can upload something straight from your computer. You can use your camera to add something. You can, you can use a URL. So in other words, if you found a photo somewhere else and you already have the URL link of that, you can paste it on here. But what works very well is using Google image search. So let's say we're going to look for house. Then be careful. If you look for house, you might end up with something like this. Maybe you want a just a simpler version of it. So we're just going to look for a house cartoon. A straightforward thing. It's easy for our foundation phase learners to identify. So let's just insert this house into our Google, right, into our Google form. One of the advantages of using this type of insert method is the images that you are going to insert are automatically um, they are automatically licensed for redistribution in this way. So we'll just insert a second image of a dog. And we might even give them the third option of a cat, just so that they've got a few images to, to confuse them. I often use the, when I search for things, add cartoon because it gives me a clip art. You can also use the terminology clip art. And it's an easier thing to identify sometimes than um, than photos. But it is entirely up to you how you want to design your form. So then exactly the same thing. We're going to give them three options. We ask them which one is the correct answer. So we're going to click on answer key. We want to select the house. And we want to make sure that we add a point to it. Now, now with all of these questions, I did not tick them as required because I want to give my learners the option if they were if they're not sure about the correct answer, then they can rather leave it out than just simply guess, depending on how you how you teach your learners how to go about it. If you want them to just guess something at least, then you can obviously tick the required answer. But if you don't tick it, it gives you as a teacher an indication of whether or not they know what is going on. Right. Um, you can play around with a number of the other of the other options. One thing that also works quite nicely is when we use something like a multiple choice grid or a checkbox grid. So if we add a multiple choice grid, we can give them question, we can give them an example. Um, let's say we want to identify figures of speech. So I'll give them a, a few examples of figures of speech. He is as fat as a pig. He is a fox. The cow, or let's say the house went whoosh as it went up in flames. Right, so here we've given them a few, a few examples, um, and they need to identify. So now we can add a simile, and we add a metaphor. So let's just let's just keep it simple. We're just going to add those two. We're going to remove that as an option. So we've got a simile and metaphor, and in the same way, we can add lots of different similes and metaphors. It's very easy if you've got it in a number of if you've got a list of, of of figures of speech, you can copy it from a Google Doc or from a Microsoft document. If it's in different numbers, you simply click here at the top and paste, and it will add them as new instances. So this creates a different type of, of, of question here. Um, and for an answer key, now you need to identify, he is as fat as a pig, right? This is a simile. He is a fox. We're going to add that as a metaphor and add a point allocation. And row three, obviously, we didn't add anything, so let's just Select an answer, but if we want to remove it, you just simply click on remove, and now we only have the two rows. And in this way, you can again create quite an interesting um, way for them to, to identify different things. 
on this, you can continue to build and continue to build to add value to your form. So another thing that you might be interested in is just customizing it a little bit. You can choose an image here at the top if you want to add an image. Again, it's, in a, it's, a, it's a case of there's a lot of variety. There are default images built in. So if we want to just select, um, let's just scroll, uh, navigate here to work and school. So we found a few examples for work and school. Let's use this one. Always a nice one to use for language teachers. It adds the image and it'll automatically assign a theme color that works with this quiz. And you can further go and define it however you want. There's also some different font styles if you want to change, play around with those things. I've always found that the default setting works best for me. So then we've changed our quiz a little bit. Now let's get into some of the settings that you need to be careful of and need to be aware of. This setting is the, or this quiz has now been created within the Western Cape Education Department. So what it does by default is it says restrict to users in Western Cape Education Department. If your school is running a GC domain, this is a very useful thing to do because if I do that and I say collect email responses, I will now know who has actually responded to my quiz without having them to enter their names or anything like that. And I can also limit it to one response. However, if you just want to make an open thing, if you are not using a G Suite, you will not be able to, you won't select this. And you can just make it open and anyone can just respond in any way that they want to. If we add the collect email response to determine which learner has added it, they will have to provide a valid email address at the beginning of, the, of our quiz. Quite often what's easier is just to add a question in there where you just have learner name and they just need to enter their name. And obviously you don't assign a point value to those. Right, when it comes to presentation, you have a few different options here. You've got a progress bar that you can, you can shuffle your question order if you want to um, do anything like that. And then show link to submit another response. Now this is only if you want them to respond multiple times. If you only want them to respond once, Again, they will have to log in, they will have to register, and then obviously the link won't, be, won't appear. And as a confirmation, you can say, congratulations for completing the quiz. Any kind of, any kind of message that you, would, that you want to um, give here. Now, an important setting here for quizzes, if you've just created a form and you want to transform it into a quiz, there's a simple button here that says, make this a quiz. Um, the Locked and Chromebooks, we're not going to go into too much detail on that. If your school has Chromebooks, then in all likelihood, you've already gone through the training regarding this. And then when you're grading something, you can immediately, they can immediately know how much they got. Or you can set, hold it back. And then once you have finished with, with going through everything, then you can send it back to them. I always feel I'd rather have them immediately know what's going on. And then missed questions, correct answers, point value. So you can remove all of these things if you want them to just submit a response and then not necessarily know how they did. However, for the feedback loop to be a lot quicker for us to be able to provide better formative assessment, it's good to activate these things so that the learner can immediately see where they went wrong and understand where they need to improve. Then the last thing we need to look at when we send this, when we want to send our Google quiz is a number of different ways that you can do it you can either send it to a bunch of emails and they will get an email um, regarding the quiz that asks them to complete the quiz very often this is the easiest way to do it if we select this second option where we just transform it into a link there is a link that you can send to them so you could typically take this copy it and send it to them over whatsapp they can click on the link and then they can get going with it or you can copy and paste it into a google classroom or whatever platform you are using to distribute the content you can also click on shorten url if you want to make it a slightly shorter url then you've got a shortened link that you can use and then there's of course um, an embedded html which is something that we're not necessarily going to use very often but if you want to if you've got a google site as an example and you want to embed it you can do it this way around however when it comes to google sites and classroom these all have ways that you can just easily get it into your classroom and that is just a basic outline of what google quiz does for you another thing that you need to keep in mind once people start answering your quizzes 
if you go to response, it will show you the responses that have been coming in. So let's let's just have a look at this quickly. We are going to preview our quiz. Right, the quiz is now just appearing on a different tab. So I'm just quickly answering it over here in a different tab. And once I've submitted it, we'll see responses changes to one. Right, when, when I click on this response, I can now have a look at how they responded. So you can either get a summary of what's going on. So one person has completed it, and I can have a sense of how they did the questions. Um, but I can also go question by question analysis. So there's the first question, see how they did in, in, in these different questions. And then when you get to this review point, this is where we can change the things to correct or, or, or incorrect. So if they have one word answers and you want to go mark it manually, you can do this as well in this way. So you don't have to have an automatically graded, um, automatically graded quiz. You can do it um, manually as well. And then, of course, there's the individual option where you go through, through the different um, people who have done it one by one. And then release score will send the score back to these learners. Right, so this is another important part of the quiz, the where they start responding. So questions, we edit it. Responses is where we see how our learners actually did in our quiz. And then all these responses, if you want to, and this becomes a little bit more complicated, you can send it to a Google Sheet where you can then go and do further calculations if you understand how Google Sheets works. Um, and you can also switch it on and off. So you can say for say to your learners, you've got a certain amount of time to complete your quiz. And then at, when it comes to the cutoff time, you can simply click on this button and they will no longer be able to submit the quizzes. There is also a plugin. We will have do this in a more advanced um, assessment of Google Forms, there are plugins that, that can do the same thing for you. And that covers all the basic elements of Google Forms, also often referred to as Google Quiz.